Welcome to our lecture online. How do we keep warm on the Earth? Well, we know it is because of carbon dioxide and water vapor in the atmosphere. But the real champ between those two molecules is the water vapor molecule. And it is so because of one fundamental difference between the two. Carbon dioxide is a linear molecule that is symmetric. It has a carbon in the middle, an oxygen on each side, and so one of the main vibrational modes does not absorb any infrared radiation because it doesn't create a dipole moment. But the water molecule is bent and therefore it has a very strong dipole moment and because of its structure it's able to vibrate not just in the three main vibrational modes but there's other additional vibrational modes that it can have. They're called librations and so we'll take a look and see what they are. First of all we have the symmetric vibration. This is where the hydrogen molecules move away and towards and away and towards the oxygen molecule in unison, symmetrically. And so we have a particular frequency associated with that and a particular wavelength. Again, because of the collisions of the molecules in the atmosphere, that brand is, of course, spread quite wide. Then we have what we call the bending vibration, where the hydrogen molecules can move closer and farther and closer and farther from one another. And therefore, we have another very strong absorption band in the 6.27 micrometer radiation band with a, with a frequency of 1595 waves per centimeter. And then we have the anti-symmetric motion, where we can have the hydrogen molecules move away and closer to the oxygen, not in use to one another, and so we have another vibrational mode due to that. In addition, we have what we call the rocking motion, where the hydrogen can rock back and forth like this relative to the oxygen. We have a twisting motion where the hydrogen molecules, uh, I should say hydrogen atoms, can move back and forth like this in opposite directions. And then we have another rocking motion where the hydrogen molecules can move back and forth like that. All of that coupled with the overtones and coupled with the rotational variations, in other words, with all the rotational motion and all the quantum jumps we can have between the rotational motion, there's a lot of different regions in the spectrum that the water molecule can absorb. For example, just on the pure rotational motion alone of this bended molecule, all of the frequencies between a zero to a thousand wavelengths or waves per centimeter are affected. This is from the long infrared radiation all the way down to 10 micrometers. Now, however, anything beyond 20 micrometers is pretty well completely absorbed. Between 10 and 20 micrometers, it only absorbs a portion of the radiation coming up from the atmosphere in any given distance. And so when we take a look at that region right here on the, black, the Earth's black body radiation curve, everything past 20 micrometers is completely absorbed, and between 10 and 20 micrometers, we have kind of a, an increasing amount of the radiation that's absorbed by the water vapor. So this takes a very big bite out of the radiation coming from the Earth, of course, keeping us nice and warm. If it was only carbon dioxide that kept us warm in the atmosphere, then we would still be frigidly cold. It is the water vapor that really carries the big part of that job in keeping us warm. It turns out in the lower atmosphere there's at least 20 times as many water vapor molecules as there are carbon dioxide molecules that coupled along with many more vibrational modes, it can do the bulk of the work. Then on the other side of the spectrum, notice that we have some other frequencies here. Based upon all the various combinations of motions, we have frequencies at the 2.7 micro, micrometer uh, wavelength, the 1.87 micrometer wavelength, the 1.38, the 1.1, the 0.94, the 0.82, and the 0.72 micrometers. However, anything past the 2 micrometer range is only going to absorb radiation coming directly from the sun. So all these radiation modes are associated with absorbance from sunlight coming from the sun and the portion of the sunlight is the infrared radiation. Visible light pretty well comes completely through unhindered, but all these various radiation bands are being absorbed by water vapor, so a lot of the radiation coming from the, from the sun is simply absorbed in the atmosphere by the water vapor in the atmosphere. Then we have these re this region right here where there's not really a lot being absorbed and a lot being radiated from the Earth. However, the water molecule does have some strong radiation absorption capability, but not to a lot of effect because there's not a lot of radiation coming up from the Earth at that particular wavelength. 
there's just one more region between 4 and 8 micrometers where water vapor takes almost all of that radiation from coming from the earth and absorbs that and only the radiation in this region right here between about 7 to about 12, 13, 14 micrometers, only that portion of it readily makes it to space, not much hindered by the absorption of the water molecule. But as you can see, all of this and all of that radiation is absorbed by water molecules based upon the radiation coming from the Earth. Again, if it wasn't for that, the Earth would be frigidly cold and we probably couldn't survive on the surface. But because of that, it has lifted the temperature basically by about 30 degrees centigrade. Wow, that is almost 55 or so degrees Fahrenheit from what it would be if there was no water vapor in the atmosphere. So water vapor coupled with carbon dioxide does indeed keep us nice and warm. If it wasn't for that, it'd be pretty bad here on the surface of the Earth.